Oh, oh, hello. You know, last week was Pro Tour Almond Cat, and in addition to helping demonstrate that Standard has finally risen from the dead, much like the zombie tribal decks which were just part of the diversity of archetypes competing, it was a super successful weekend purely as a product. Over 40,000 viewers at one point, making this one of the most successful Pro Tours in terms of viewership numbers. And that's a great thing. As I have said before, the Pro Tour is actually one of the most important parts of Magic the Gathering. Whether you are obsessed with watching competitive Magic played by the very best around, or even if you don't really care about watching it, the Pro Tour is still a critical part of Magic's success and the key to its future. And as I watched this historically highly viewed Pro Tour, one thought, and one thought only, kept coming back and back to me, running through my mind. You see, what we should be doing is putting those ribs in a burger. It's a million dollar idea. Now, I know what you're saying. Ain't nobody want ribs on a burger. What about the bones? <laughs> well, what we do is take the bones out. Million dollar idea. No, no, no. Ah! Sorry, I, I meant something needs to be done about these ads and dead time. Blah 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 blah. First of all, let's be clear about something. Coverage and presentation of the Pro Tour has come a long way and is better than it has ever been. The coverage team should all be commended, as what we saw last weekend was top-notch, not only with their insight and analysis, but hey, also in their ability to handle the inevitable technical difficulties and other problems that are just inherent with a live broadcast. I have up before and I have recovered before. Like you, you just gotta have to get used to it. You, you play magic, you're gonna f up. That's how it is. Yeah, may, may, maybe even in this interview. <laughs> and the production team as well, the people behind the scenes deserve a pat on the back, as the design and layout is light years improved from what was a relatively short time ago. They are now utilizing better overlays, the card images for a better viewer experience all around. I think in many ways the higher numbers are in some ways a reflection of this. But let us also be very clear about another thing. The pro tour itself is essentially an ad. Ad breaks within an ad, such as that damn ribwitch one which played ad nauseum, should not be factored into the equation. Quite frankly, the revenue these Twitch ads generate is likely insignificant compared to the costs of the Pro Tour anyway. And by trying to monetize what is, again, an ad, you run the risk of turning an effective method of getting people interested in and enfranchised in the product into to an ineffective one. Example, see Duels of the Planeswalkers, but that's another story, never mind. As many have said, if you need monetization, open up things like the Pro Tour to big name sponsorships. Now, let us assume that these ads are required as part of Magic's contract with Twitch, which is a very reasonable assumption, in which case they're not going to be turned off, they aren't going anywhere. Okay. Fine, but even so, there's another kind of ad break that needs to be addressed. Or at least what we casually refer to as an ad break, but in reality is the required pauses of downtime that a live production such as this does require. During these breaks, players aren't playing, and commentators aren't commentating, and this highly rated, highest level of competitive play and excellent production all around comes crashing down when we cut to even just three minutes of this. Um. 
That was 15 seconds. Imagine three minutes of it. Might as well be three hours. I probably lost a significant number of my viewers just by showing that brief example. Breaks need to happen, this is a fact, but they don't need to be like that. Who picked that music? Who approved that selection? Who said a static slideshow was the way to go? And who decided on those particular slides? This is demonstrative of a very important thing. The corporate boardroom is not who you turn to for entertainment. Having the corporate minds at Wizards design and develop what is shown during these breaks is about as sensible as having those same corporate minds actually just sit down and play the game on camera. No, you turn to the pros. And so, in the case of these needed breaks, well, maybe we need to turn instead to content creators, or popular Magic the Gathering streamers, or magic artists, or magic art critics. The the vloggers, the bloggers, the people of Magic the Gathering community that have proven time and time again that they can engage and energize the Magic player base. And no, I'm absolutely not talking about myself here as I understand that my content is completely unacceptable for any official corporate coverage such as the Pro Tour, but there is a plethora of awesome, talented people out there in Magic who have made careers out of getting people excited about this game. Content creators have the talent to engage viewers, to create a sense of community, to reach that audience in a way the corporate boardroom can't. So let us instead tap into that value, because whoever thought this was a great way to sell product and keep 40,000 fans excited and engaged? Well, that probably is who should be selecting the right song to play for customers on hold instead. Here's some tough love, Wizards of the Coast. You are a corporation, and that means whatever attempts at entertaining and engaging content you create will still always be just that. Corporate. You make the best game in the world, and you've finally started doing an amazing job getting coverage of that game in its high-level competitive state, getting that all together. But you need to accept that fun filler just isn't you. It's not what you produce. And in accepting this, turn to the resources you have available, the creators in your community. Imagine if during these needed downtimes we could cut instead to Saffron Olive taking us through one of his latest deck decks. Or Paul Cheon or a host of other streamers not only playing a round of Magic Online, but interacting with the very Twitch chat that's watching the main event. They possess those skills. And I am not talking about just producing a couple pre-made things to show on a repeating loop but rather using content creators and popular streamers in real time to keep viewers interacting, exciting, and yeah, entertained and engaged. Honestly, name me a deck or a format where this has any chance of seeing anything besides vomit when it hits the battlefield. I can't even right now. And no, I don't think my content is appropriate, but cutting to Jimmy and Josh from the command zone to talk commander, or magic man Sam to talk magic art and the creative process, or windmill slam doing rounds of their Magic the Gathering game show, asking MTG personalities, as well as maybe even the chat itself, trivia and other MTG challenges, hey, this would be a next level play on the part of production. At the very least, it would allow the folks on coverage to take a moment to have a bite to eat for lunch, drink a cup of hot tea while Dev from Strictly Better MTG wraps out a budget deck tech. 
And I ain't lying though, we gotta have this rhino My favorite Pokemon will wipe you out like an albino uh. And after that we gotta finish him off So when the five saw we run a pair of wing made rocks <gasps> The list goes on and on Bring podcasters on to cut to For live portions of their show Imagine a live Magic Mike segment Or a live top level podcaster Turn one thought sees And actually Wizards of the Coast Has already dipped their toes into this With great productions such as Friday Nights and Enter the Battlefield, formerly Walking the Plains. These are shows that are supported by wizards, but not really made by them. They're made instead by their respective content creators. In fact, during the Pro Tour last weekend, wizards even aired new Enter the Battlefield episodes, which is many ways what I am talking about. In fact, it's ironic that the episode that air focused on creators such as Paul Cheon and Christine Sprankle, and yes, I was actually featured in that episode of Enter the Battlefield, and I encourage everyone to go check it out and compare the quality of such content to that slideshow with elevator music. So show new episodes of Friday Nights and Enter the Battlefield during these segment breaks. Not just one new program, which yes, they should do, but also dive back into that rich back catalog of episodes or commission shorter versions to air for the shorter breaks. This is the direction we need to go in. I encourage all of you watching to go vote with your views and show wizards both that you are interested in Magic the Gathering content creators and the content they have already waded into by going to watch this particular recent episode of Enter the Battlefield, which I will link in the description. This is the first time an episode has featured content creators and not just pros as its focus, so I feel demonstrating to them that this is something that can generate views and interest is something we should do. Vote with your views, and hopefully Wizards of the Coast will realize that the value of supporting their content creators is high, and most importantly, that the action during something like the Pro Tour doesn't need to stop. Mm -hmm.